In this video, I'm gonna show you how I created these animations in Cinema 4D for this adorable looking marshmallow bunny. Then we're gonna import this into Unreal Engine where I'm gonna show you how we can override the animations inside of Sequencer and use this like a time remapping function to animate these sections however we want. We are in Cinema 4D and look at the bunny. Okay, step one, I'm gonna show you how I process this model. So quick overview of the model. This is what I downloaded. It's actually a CAD file that I got for free off the internet. So thank you for this free file. Uh, but if you look at this, you can see um, it's an STL file. Topology isn't amazing. So I'll just quickly show you how I process this to get an asset and then we'll dig into animation. I ended up separating the eyes into two pieces. So you see this bunny that we start with. Uh, pretty straightforward. I used the volume builder on this to kind of smooth this out. So the volume builder with these settings, one centimeter uh, for the voxel size. And this worked pretty well. Threw this inside of the volume mesher and you can already start to see that this gets a much cleaner model that feels more like the marshmallow than the multiple pieces. And then in addition to this, I threw this into remesher. Yeah, I used the X symmetry so it was a little smoother. And look at that, nice clean topology. Did the exact same thing on the eyes and assigned materials and done magic marshmallow bunny. Okay, so with this, you'll see what I did is I made these editable, brought these up here into a new object. And the one thing I looked at for reference on this, there was a bunch of little like sugar crystals that kind of helped sell this. So if you're curious as to how I did all this together, this is the setup. I made this pretty much two platonics. I named them crystals, but you can kind of see here, one's just the whatever. Threw these into a cloner, used this uh, exterior shell. So I cloned a bunch of these on the surface, a uh, random effector to just give it a little bit of scale variation. And then I applied a unique material and this kind of gave me some sugar crystals. Now, when I went to animate this without this connect object, and this guy is already animated, but you will see that it's reading these as two separate things. So these crystals are not actually moving with this. So if you want all of these, uh, deformers that we're going to use to animate make sure you've got the connect object and with this point you'll see here i have a twist squash and stretch and two bends this is what i'm using to get this point level animation which alembic is great for uh, but one note that is important is how i set up this timeline here so i put these markers in here so i kind of know that from zero to one second which is 30 frames um, I pretty much made my hold or my end keyframe right here, but this is how I'm going to twist this guy. So it looks to the left and then returns. And this way I kind of know what these states are. So I have zero to one second. He looks to the left and then one to two seconds. He returns back. And this is so I can block my timing out a lot easier as I'm going from frames to seconds, which is how Unreal is going to use this in the geometry cache when we get to it. So he looks back and forth, that's our twist. And I've also have a squash and stretch in here and then two bend deformers, so you can see how this is. So these guy squishes down, he bends, that's cute. And then he stretches. Now I would make this jump inside of Cinema 4D, but actually translating the mesh up and down is actually not gonna export with the Alembic. So I'm gonna stack this animation in Unreal and we've got this guy. So you see squash, stretch, jumps, he you know, does his little bendy thing and back down. One other thing to note is he looks side to side. It's pretty robotic and it's slow. This is gonna allow me to kind of retime this and likely what I'll probably have him do is just look over a couple frames, but I can retime this and make it a lot faster. And then the jump, pretty happy with. So there's the hop. Okay, so we've got this set up. We've got all these pieces here. We don't really need to do much else other than export. So I'm gonna middle mouse click on Pete Bunny. So I've got all of these things. Export as Alembic with this little wheel. And you wanna make sure that the timing is uh, set in here. So I'm at 150. So make sure your end frame is set to 150. Uh, also make sure you have selection only checked or you're gonna get all this other stuff in here. So I've already exported this out. Let's jump into Unreal Engine. Now this is the work in progress scene, basic lighting, but look at this guy. He's cute, he's adorable. So these are the exports that I have. There's a few other objects in here that I used to build out the scene, but the main one that we want is Peeps Bunny. Now this is a decent file size because uh, a lot of these cloner objects are in here. It's calculating all the data for this for every single frame. So this guy gets a little big, but if I stripped all that out, it'd be smaller. Doesn't really matter. 
So we're gonna drag and drop it in the folder. I've already imported it, but I do wanna show you the settings. So when you pull this in, you see we've got our zero to 150. Our frames look right, so we've got everything that's in there. Two main things that we wanna do, make sure this is set to geometry cache. This should be on by default, but if not, check your plugins and just make sure that uh, Alembic and geometry cache are enabled. So we set that, make sure all your frames are here, and then flatten tracks. If you leave this checked on, you're gonna strip out all your materials and it's gonna be one thing. So you wanna uncheck this because as you can see here, I've got one, two, three materials that I want to import. And the other thing you can do as well is by default, Cinema 4D will bring this thing in on its side. You can set the X rotation to 90 and that should pop it upright. Um, I forgot to do it in this one, so I just rotated it manually, but not bad best practice to have. And when the bunny comes in, you'll see here, if I open this up, I have the three slots that are in here. I went ahead and set the materials on this geometry cache so I don't have to do it over and over in this scene. All right, so the next thing we've got is we have a sequencer here. So say we wanna, let's just do this from scratch. We've got, so if I drag this guy in, I probably should rotate him so he's not on his back, but for the sake of time, we're gonna go the lazy route and just prop them right up. So if we select them, this is pretty much the easy part. Bring it in, drag and drop this guy in. Now, usually what you could do is if you wanna test this, you just do geometry cache. And this is gonna give you this full animation that is going to mimic one-to-one -one what we have in Cinema 4D. So you can see that he looks side to side. Uh, this other guy's jumping properly, but this looks like how we prepped it in Cinema 4D. So how do we get this guy to look like this guy? We actually don't want the geometry cache. We wanna twirl this down and we're gonna do this individually. We want geometry cache component. And under that, we have all of these controls that we can work with, but there's only one that we want to use. And the one we wanna use is start time offset. Now this is going to directly mimic our timeline that we have in here. So zero to 30 is actually gonna be zero to one inside of Unreal. So if we scrubbed through this, um, Try to scrub it, but yeah, it goes a little, a little nutty. But if we go to one second, you can see now he's looking there. And if I jump ahead to two seconds, he's back. And then three goes to the other side, and then four is back. And then from four, I think 4.5 is about mid hop. So you can see already this equates to seconds in here. Now, instead of doing this again, I'm gonna show you how I just did this the first time. So we're gonna delete this bunny. I'm gonna twirl this guy open and this is how I animated it. So same thing, start time offset. You can see the values that I went in here and you just add your keyframes and it's just like time remapping. And then this is my hop sequence. So he hops from zero to 190. So I did this over one second, I was good with that. And then the transform, Y position, I used linear because I wanted this guy to just kind of stick. And then the up and down and the Z axis. So you can really just kind of copy and paste at this point and away you go. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, do the little bell thingy so you get the notifications, uh, and let us know if there's anything you'd like to see or any other ways that you think we could help. Thank you so much.